Shalom, giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship to you. How about Shem Yahushai, Baha Shem Makakwadash, the Ba'ana City Elders and the Apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to you, Akim, upon testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and sincerity. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. So it says, the first thing is said is that we are supposed to be holy. I don't want to just skip over that. And holy means separate. Separate from what? Separate from the ways and the fashion of this world. Being clean. And, and that holy is going into your mind frame, first and foremost. We have to be set apart from the mind frame of this world. What is it, what is acceptable in this society is often um, not acceptable uh, according to the Heavenly Father and His will and vice versa. And so we have to be we have to be fully submerged in the spirit because the thing is with the spirit, if you don't give glory unto the Lord your God, um, what he can do is he can cause darkness. And what is giving glory? It's doing what he requires of you. And everybody has a certain lot and everybody is not going to be required to do the same thing. So don't deceive yourself by comparing yourself to another man. All right. You're in this fight against yourself. You know, your enemy is not the next man. No, it's yourself. And only uh, at realizing that can you properly act accordingly to truly be in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And it's a daily walk. It's not a thing where oh, I, I got there and I'm just there for it. No, you have, to, you have to continue to trim you have to continue the season. The apostles are going into, uh, you know, trimming the the lamp, which goes into um, essentially having a certain level of a uh, creative uh, condiments along with what you have before you. So, and they they made the connection with if you got a steak, you want some what? You want some salt? You want some pepper? You want some gravy? And that's the same thing with the spirit. The spirit can't be left bare. You have to bring, you have to, and that, that takes what? Passion, desire. You know? You have to go dig and, okay, to feed the spirit, well, let me go study some Greek. Or let me make sure, you know, I understand, make sure I'm, the spirit is rooted. Well, let me study my Hebrew alphabets. Let me study the tribes. How do I say, you know, Zebulun? Who, who are the Zebulonites? I mean, how do I say that in Hebrew? Who, who are those people today? You know, that's um, and um, you know, and also going into the meat. You know, it was I just said steak. So okay, King Masha, who is that? Who was that today? Who who was that? Who was that to come? You know, and those things are revealed through faith. All of this is based upon faith, by the way. Every everything that we speak of is is faith oriented. Now we do have, you know, it's real, is is substance behind it. But what we believe in, which is the salvation of the souls of the elect, that's one hundred percent based on faith. No. Um, I'm gonna continue. It says, in beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness, humility is important. Having mercy, having, having mercy is tremendously important because in order for you to receive mercy, you have to be a giver of mercy. And if you're not a giver of mercy, remember the parable uh, with the rich man or the king and uh, the individual who played with the king's money. And he asked for mercy, he asked for time, and the king, like, okay, I got you. 
But then when he saw one of his fellow servants that, um, you know, owe him money or owes him resources, and he said, uh, you know, he he likewise asked him for assistance and patience. And what did he do? He choked him up, and he demanded it not then. Which, that that's not of the spirit. That's not if you do that amongst brethren. All right. You know, if you if you don't have mercy, how do you expect to receive mercy from the heavenly Father? Because none of us are perfect, man, and none of us can be justified the 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 law, but we um we abide in the law. I'm gonna say it again. None of us can be justified by the law. We're not gonna be saved by the keeping of the laws. We're not, but we abide in the law. We are the law. Where well, you, I was shy. He said, "I come in the volume of the book." It, all right, which of course we understand the layer of that meaning, you know, different aspects of the book is spoke. This is really spoken about him. The different prophecies of the different kings, King David and Isaiah, they were speaking about him, but it's also meaning that he actually embodied the law. You know, he was the law. All right, he he was perfect in. No, he wasn't justified by his works either. He was actually justified because he was predestined to, to be at the right hand of the Heavenly Father from the beginning of the world. And that's likewise what we believe through faith. It says, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Mashiach forgave you also, so also do ye. And oftentimes when you feel you feel in some type of way about a brother, it's really spirits. It's really it really you. It really could be you. You think in this way and then it's really not even exactly what you was it's just your mind playing tricks on you. And that's why it's important to which I'm gonna get that in the next scripture, be sober minded. Not be puffed up, but and, and be humble. Because if you're humble, you're able to see things at an angle, you know, that somebody who's proud can't because they're not lowly. And so they can't see the root essence of things. They can only see what it is barren because they're so high up, right? <laughs> you know, but it's better to be grounded. That way, you you know, that your foundation is more sure. Mm, verse 14, and above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Which charity doesn't always mean giving tithes and money. Yes, that's it too. But charity could be your time. Charity could be, you know, your resources. And, you know, it's different. Charity really goes into love. <sighs> and, and what you... What you sacrifice for what you love. <laughs> and we all have to sacrifice. That's what we have to consistently recall in our, our spirit and understanding that all of us are required to sacrifice for the nation. And ultimately, of course, it's about the elect. You understand? But we're going to bring back honor and glory and um, and uh, peace to our nation via the elect and via doing the the will of the heavenly Father, which the elect shall. Now this is um Matthew chapter five verse forty four, and it reads: It says, "But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you." And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And who is that talking about? Individuals. Well, if, if you got an art with a brother in the camp, uh, IUIC, um, you know, these different other Israelite camps. All right. Even Jake, just Jacob in general, to be honest. All right. Of course, we try to have because they do. Well, they don't believe, man. <laughs> these guys don't believe. 
But the the point being, you want to be blameless. And you want to, even though, you know, okay, they call us this, they call us that. Well, we still, guess what? We'll still pray for them. You know, because they don't know what they did. The Lord blinded them. You can't really get mad at them. When you really look at it for what it is, they have a lot to fulfill. Now, some of them will come out of their blindness. Some of them were just destined to be destroyed in it. Nevertheless, our job is not to, you know, make it personal, but more so um, personify the spirit, all right, and be an example. Our job is to be their example, not to hate them or, you know, this and that. You know, it's our, really our job is to be there and be there an example and a good one at that, not being a bad example. Now, it says, um, I'm going to continue to read verse 45, that ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. If ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? That's why apostles say, if you see those guys like Sakari, he's like, yeah, just salute them, give them a shovel on them and keep it moving. That's a salute, even though they hate us, even though they're infidels, even though they proclaim that you can defile the Lord's Sabbath. And, and they've done that and they show great examples of that as well. And they even now that we see them boldly just teaching that you can deal with woman, your woman on the Sabbath and saying, and, you know, talking all type of madness. I, yeah, I heard even Al-Azhar, the head of Zakari, called the high priest R.A.L. B. word. You know, these guys are, are really dishonorable, terrible human beings. That's just no honor for your elders. That's just a lack of respect. That's not Israelite culture. That's a, that's a heathenistic way of being, man. And, um, yeah, we uh we don't want to be like that. We want to we wanna pray for these individuals. Is that, I mean, you know, goodness sake, if you, if you really saw what's about to happen to them, if they don't repent, you would... You will feel sorry for them, man. The Lord's about to do something terrible to these people. And, you, and if you saw what the Lord's about to do, you uh, you right now you will pray for mercy for them. You will pray that they come out of that, so they so they don't have to receive that um, um that judgment. And also because you yourself, you don't want to be brought into a The Lord can put that spirit on you, where you be a reprobate, and you think how they think, and you not see how they cannot see. And you be hateful as they're hateful. And you, you know, you not, you not be on point the way they're not on point. This is not a thing. This is not based upon our own works. This is because the Lord called us and he put the spirit upon us to see properly and to do the, his, his proper will. It's not, it's not based upon our own works. That's just the mercy of the Heavenly Father. So we don't have anything to boast against these other people. All right. We don't have anything to be proud against these other people about. All right, and first of all, we're not in, we're not in our kingdom yet. We still even to this day in our captivity, so we definitely should be lowly. And um, in due season, the Lord will exalt us. We do believe that. No, we just got to be more humble, man. We have to be more humble, because Yahweh Shah said, "If you're not humble, you can't see the kingdom." What's that? Matthew the 18th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. He said, unless you be the as one of these little babes, you know, you cannot see the see the, kin, the kingdom of heaven. Pardon me. <clears throat> I'm going to finish it up with First Peter's chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So we're supposed to be sober minded, not carried away with sexual lust, not carried away with eating um, eating too much food and uh, unclean foods, and unhealthy foods. That's that 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 in drinking and you know taking this and taking that in excess. You understand? We have to be spiritually oriented, so we can see if, so we can see what's taking place around us. Because there's a lay a, a lay of darkness laying upon the earth where these people are at, we're at the end of the earth, 
part of we're at the end of the world. Russia and you know, we see the NATO it seems as if they're about to fight. And they are disunified and that's why it's, it's they um as the prophecy says in the book of Daniel, it says part iron, part Maori clay because NATO is disunified even with dealing with Russia. They don't allow some of them countries it doesn't work to their benefit to to for Russia and Russia and Ukraine to um to fight Russia over Ukraine. You know, but America which that's what's gonna cause the beat the beast to hate the whore. That's another topic, you understand, but we do see these prophecies coming to pass. The point I'm trying to make is, and you see people, they can't even see. It. Like they just worried about their own flesh. People are not considering the gravity of the circumstances at hand that this man, E, is bringing out his um, institution or his um, his system with this uh, these devices that he, he's trying to incorporate into people. You know? And this is biblical prophecy, and this is very serious times, so we have to act accordingly. We have to treat the times as if, you know, as is what it, it is. It's the end of the world. So if it's the end of the world, you're going to move the same way as you moved in the 90s. <laughs> you understand? You get the point I'm saying? Or you, did you move? In, well, it's never, we've never been in a place of rest or comfort. But the point I'm trying to make is World War Three is brewing, you know, any moment, famine, uh, inflation, blackouts, life changing, society changing event could happen literally at any moment. And we have to be prepared in the spirit, or we will be, we will bug out. We will not have the spirit upon us, and we won't make it. That's going to be the reality for those who do not count the cost, and that's the, counting the cost is trimming your lamps. And right now is our opportunity to trim our lamp. That way we can have light in the time of darkness. And for the bride, groom, is at the door. Um, he's coming with fire. So that will get all praises and honor and glory and worship. Mm. Well, matter of fact, let me read verse A2 because this likewise is speaking concerning charity, just as the previous verse. It says, And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality to one another without grudging. So when you do use hospitality for brothers or however you know it goes down, don't do it in a grudging spirit. Okay, if you struggle, all right, you know, don't put too much that you can't bear, but. You know, if you're struggling more so, or if it's like, uh, if it's a situation where you feel kind of uncomfortable, just put it, prayers up to the spirit, you know, and be spiritually minded. Don't be carnally minded about things such as charity, which are spiritual, and it can bring forth spiritual fruit if you have the right type of mindset when doing it. You had the mindset is important. This mindset is just as, just as or more important than the actual act of doing it. Intent is, is, is valuable. Um, so yeah, with that, I give. I'll, I will once again give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, um, Bashem Um The bunch of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and salutations to Yakim. Shalom, keep the faith.